They're requesting an engine, tanker, ladder truck, and any available manpower. Some 2,000 residents, nearly half of East Palestine, still under evacuation orders. It could potentially explode, causing deadly disbursement of shrapnel and toxic fumes. So following new modeling information conducted this morning by the Ohio National Guard, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro are ordering an immediate evacuation in a one mile by two mile area surrounding East Palestine, which includes both Ohio and Pennsylvania. The smoke so thick it could be seen from this weather radar and conditions so concerning, firefighters had to leave the area as they let the fire burn. It doesn't smell safe that I'm taking my things and I'm out of here. Don't tell me it's safe. Something's going on if the fish are floating in the creek. It's still a very volatile situation. February 3rd, 2023, 8.54 p.m. Norfolk Southern Train 32N, a mixed freight carrying thousands of gallons of vinyl chloride, butyl acrylate, ethyl hexyl acrylate, and other chemicals, rolls through East Palestine, Ohio, when a mechanical failure causes 38 of the 150 cars to derail, spilling their contents all over the right-of-way. The heat from the mechanical failure and the derailment itself sets the spilled toxic material ablaze, immediately starting an environmental and humanitarian emergency that's still ongoing. But what really caused this train to derail? What is Norfolk Southern doing about this disaster, and how has the derailment affected the town and environment? The leading cause of this derailment was a mechanical failure on one of the cars. Security camera footage from trackside buildings about 20 miles west of East Palestine shows one of the rail cars throwing sparks, and one of its bogies may have been on fire. The NTSB suspects it was a roller bearing that failed. Roller bearings are what allow rail cars and locomotives axles to rotate smoothly, and when they fail, they fail spectacularly, usually turning red even white hot from friction, and sometimes seizing the wheel altogether. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't the trackside defect detector stop the train? Those machines are designed to spot overheating equipment and notify the train crew about it. Unfortunately, I don't have much of an answer. The NTSB says they're still investigating data collected from the locomotives and defect detectors. I think a failed roller bearing is a very possible cause of this derailment, but I also think the possibility of a stuck brake shouldn't be ruled out. There will be a final answer though. The NTSB has collected wheel sets, relief valves, and top fittings from the initial problem car. The suspected failed wheel bearing will be sent to the NTSB's materials laboratory in Washington DC for examination. And the relief valves and top fittings will be examined by the NTSB then sent to Texas for further examination and testing. Another potential cause for the derailment is PSR, or Precision Scheduled Railroading. PSR is a double-edged sword. It does a lot of good for shareholders by increasing efficiency, putting trains on a fixed schedule, and increasing profit. However, it does a lot of bad for employees on the ground, such as putting safety at risk, exponentially increasing train length, allowing for less frequent inspections, and overall increasing the chance for derailment. One could argue that if PSR wasn't implemented on Norfolk Southern, that the car that caused this derailment could have been inspected sooner slash more frequently and had its mechanical problems addressed before it ever came to this. Norfolk Southern is responsible for cleaning this mess up. They've contracted several companies to help with the cleanup, and the EPA is working closely with them. Cleanup workers have been taking air, soil, and water samples to see how bad the levels of contamination are. They've been working hard to contain and remove ground and water pollution. However, there are some things they could be doing better. One of the biggest issues is the burning of the rail car contents. 
The fear was that the remaining chemicals in the rail cars could explode. And let's be real, rail car explosions are no joke. In this case, the possible explosion would have been a blevy, also known as a boil and liquid expand and vapor explosion, which is one of the most powerful types of explosions out there. If even one of the cars would have exploded, East Palestine, Ohio wouldn't exist anymore, so the chemicals had to be rid of. However, crews went about it in arguably the most archaic and dangerous way possible, by burning off the remaining chemicals. The fire that was intentionally started built millions, possibly billions of cubic feet worth of black toxic smoke into the air. One of the gases in the smoke was phosgene gas, which is known to cause vomiting and breathing trouble, and was also used as a weapon in World War I. Now, not only was the town of East Palestine at risk for toxic fumigation, but the neighboring communities were also put in danger because of the drifting dangerous gases in the smoke. My question is, was the burning of the chemicals really the only option? Tank cars have multiple ports on them. Was there no way to bring in trucks and have the chemicals sucked out and shipped off? Sure, burning everything might have been the fastest way to solve the problem, but was it the safest? And did it have the community's best interest in mind? Another pressing issue is how Norfolk Southern is treating the residents of East Palestine. The company has tried to make them sign no-fault documentations, as well as attempting to relocate many residents. There's also been attempts at compensation, with Norfolk Southern offering residents $1,000 checks, but no amount of money can repair this loss of quality of life. Residents in the small town at East Palestine, Ohio were forced to evacuate in order to escape the toxic chemical spill and raging inferno in their backyard. Some went to live with family, others got hotels, and I wouldn't be surprised if a portion of the town's population were, and possibly still are, left as nomads. Thankfully, there's been no deaths from this derailment, but the long-term effects from the exposure to this mixture of chemicals is still unknown. It's possible that people's lifespans could be shortened because of this. The chemicals that were spilled and subsequently burned are known to cause cancer. In response to the large area affected by the derailment, a one to two mile exclusion zone was set up around the town, not only to keep people away from the toxic chemicals, but also to protect anyone from shrapnel should one of the tank cars explode. It's been over two weeks since the derailment and residents have been cleared to return home, but there is still much concern over safety. Some residents of the town have reported a strong stench in the air, burning eyes, headaches, rashes, as well as sick and dying pets slash animals. There's also concern for the surrounding farmland and if it'll be viable for cultivation. And if it is, will those crops have absorbed any toxic chemicals? So not only are the people of the town at risk, but the town's economy is at risk as well. Within the first day of the derailment, thousands of fish in nearby waterways died. The chemicals from the rail cars had leached into streams and rivers, poisoning the water. Even now, there are fish turning up dead miles and miles away from the derailment site, and there's a cloud of pollution moving through the Ohio River on its way to the Mississippi, putting thousands more communities at risk. There's also the concern for wildlife that's drinking the contaminated water. As stated earlier, those chemicals can cause cancer. Along with the surface water, aquifers might have also been contaminated. For a while there, it wasn't recommended to drink tap water in East Palestine. Only bottled water was advised. Thankfully, recent tests by the EPA have shown no contaminants in the groundwater. Cleanup for this disaster is still ongoing and will take a very long time. The toxic chemicals are in the ground, air, and water. They're simply everywhere. I think East Palestine has a low chance of becoming uninhabitable, but there will certainly be people who will never return. The waterways, aquifers, and soil will likely have to be monitored for months or even years to ensure the safety of the townspeople and environment. It's unfortunate because disasters like this are preventable. This wasn't a freak accident. This was negligence. 
Roller bearings don't just fail out of nowhere. There's wear patterns and degradation that's detectable long before roller bearings even come close to outright failing. And as for the hotbox detector, maybe it was malfunctioning too. Like I said, the NTSB is still investigating that. There's also the matter of PSR and the way the train was assembled in the yard. As stated earlier, PSR allows for less frequent inspections and one routine inspection of the car that caused this derailment likely could have stopped this mess from ever happening. And as for train assembly, maybe don't put hazardous materials at the beginning of the train, if you can help it. I understand that train assembly can get complicated. Also, the length of the train could have been seen as an issue as well. If it was only 100 cars long as opposed to 150, then there would have been less kinetic energy when the train derailed and maybe not so many cars would have come off the tracks. There's still a lot that's going on with this derailment, not only with physical things such as cleanup and investigations, but also with legal things, as Norfolk Southern is facing multiple federal lawsuits right now. There's also still a lot of information that hadn't come out yet, and I'm sure as time goes on, this situation will only become even more of a cluster. Remember, this is still a developing situation, and we will still be learning and hearing about this for years into the future. Hopefully Norfolk Southern and other railroads will take note of what's happened and happening and work to better themselves and their operations because of this, so something as catastrophic as this derailment can't happen again. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Till next time.